Hello everybody, welcome to theCUBE's coverage of MongoDB World 2022. This is the first Mongo live MongoDB World since 2019. The Cube has covered a number of, of Mongo shows, actually going back to when the company was called TenGen, as some of you may recall. Mongo since then has done an IPO, I think it IPO'd in 2017. It's, it's been a rocket ship company. It's up, it'll probably do 1.2 billion in revenue this year. It's got a billion dollars in cash on the balance sheet. Uh, despite the, the tech lash, it's still got a 19 or 20 billion dollar valuation growing above 50% a year. Uh, the company just had a really strong quarter and, and they seem to be hitting on all cylinders. My name is Dave Vellante and here to kick it off with me is Sanjeev Mohan who is the principal at Sanjmo. Sanjeev, great to see you. You've become a, a wonderful Cube contributor, <laughs> former Gartner Thank analyst, you. really sharp, know the database space and the data space generally really well. So thanks for coming back on. You're welcome. You know, it's, it's just amazing how exciting the entire data space is. It's like they used to say companies are, all companies are software companies, all companies are data companies. <laughs> so data has become the, the foundation. Yeah, they say software is eating the world, data is eating software, and yeah, so you know, a lot of, a lot yeah. of little, little yeah. quips here, but this yeah. is a good sized show, if I know, four or 5,000 people, I don't really know exactly yeah. you know, the numbers, but it's exciting. Of course, a lot of financial services were here at the Javits Center. Mm -hmm. um, let's, let's lay down the basics for people. MongoDB is a, is a document database, but mm -hmm. they've been advancing that. So document database is an alternative to RDBMS. Explain that, but explain also also how Mongo has broadened its capabilities yeah. in serving a lot more uh, use cases. Right, so, so that's my forte is like databases technology, but before even I talk about that, I have to say I am blown away by this MongoDB world because MongoDB uh, unbeckonced to all of us during the pandemic has really come of age and it's a billion dollar company now. Uh, we are in this brand new Javits Center that's been built during the pandemic. Right. And, and now the company is holding this event. They hired thousand people last year. So I think this company has really grown. And why has it grown? Is because its offerings have grown to more developers than just a document database. Document databases revolutionized the whole DBMS space when NoSQL came up because for a change, you didn't need a structured schema. You could start bringing data in this document model schema, uh, like varying schema. But since then, they've added uh, things like search. So they have Lucene search. They added uh, geospatial. They added time series last year. And this year, they keep adding more and more. So like for example, they're going to add some column store indexes. So from being a purely transactional, they are now starting to address analytical and they're starting to address more use cases like you know, uh, like what, uh, what was announced this morning at Keynote was faceted search. So they're expanding, they're going deeper and deeper into these other data structures. So they've taken Lucene and made it a you know, search of first class citizen. Correct. Uh, but, but I want to ask you some basic questions about document database. So it's, it's no fixed schema. So you put Correct. anything in Correct. there actually. Yeah. So it's more data friendly. They're trying to simplify you know, the use mm. of data. Okay, right. that's, that's pretty yeah. clear. What are the trade-offs of a, of a document database? Yeah. So, so it's not like you know, one technology has solved every problem. Every technology comes with its own uh, trade-offs. So in a document, uh, you basically get rid of joining tables with primary foreign keys because you can have a flexible schema and so in, within sing, single document, so it's very easy to write and, and search. But when you have a lot of repeated elements and you start getting more and more complex, your document size can start expanding quite a bit because you're trying to club everything into a single space. So, so that is where the complexity goes up. So, so what does that mean for, for a practitioner? It means they have to think about what, how they, how they are ultimately going to structure, how they're going to query, so they can get the best performance, yeah. is that right? So they got to put some time in up front Yes. In order to make it pay back at the tail end, but it clearly it's, it's working, but is that the correct way of thinking about it? A hundred percent. In the SQL world, you didn't care about the SQL analytical queries, you just cared about how your data model was structured, and then SQL would, would basically search any uh, model. But in the NoSQL world, you have to know your patterns 
before you you invest into the the database. So so it's changed that equation where you come in knowing what you are signing up. So a couple other questions if I can, kind of Colombo questions. So, so Mongo talks about how it's really supporting mission critical applications. Yes. And at the same time, my understanding is the, uh, the architecture of Mongo specifically, or a document database in general, but Mongo specifically, you've got a, a primary uh, a database, and yeah. then you, and that is the sort of the master, if you will, right? Correct. And then you can create secondaries, but so, it, it, help me square the circle between mission critical and really maybe a, more of a focus on, I'll say, consistency versus availability. Do, do customers have to sort of think about and design in that mm -hmm. availability? How do they do that? How are Mongo customers handling that? So I have to say, uh, my experience of MongoDB was, was that the whole company, the whole ethos was developer friendly. So uh, to be honest, I don't think MongoDB was as much focused on high availability, disaster recovery, even security to some extent. Mm -hmm. They were more focused on developer productivity. And, and simplicity, user experience. Right? Simplicity, I mean, yeah. make it simple, make the developers productive as fast as you can. What has really, uh, was an inflection point for MongoDB was the launch of Atlas. Because with Atlas, they were able to introduce all of these management features and hide it, abstract it from the end users. So now they've got, you know, like uh, 2014 is when Atlas came out and it was in four regions, but today they are in 100 regions. Mm -hmm. So they keep expanding then every hyperscale cloud provider and, and they've abstracted that whole management. Okay, so Atlas of course is the, the managed database, the Correct. database as a service in the cloud, right. and so it's those cloud, right. that cloud infrastructure and cloud tooling right. that has allowed them to, to go after those high availability applications. My other question is, when you talk about adding search, geospatial, time series, there are a lot of specialized databases mm -hmm. that for, take time series, for Correct. instance. You have time series yeah. specialists that go deep into time series. Can a company like Mongo with an all-in-one strategy, mm -hmm. uh, how close can they get to that functionality? Do they have to be, you know, it's kind of a classic Microsoft, you know, maybe not perfect, but good enough. I mean, can they compete with those other areas, uh, with those other specialists, and, and what happens to those specialists if the answer is yes? What's your take on that, if that question makes so, sense? So David, this is not a MongoDB only issue. This is, this <laughs> is an issue with you know, any time series database, mm -hmm. any graph database. Should I put a graph database or should I put a, uh, a multi-functional uh, database, multi-dimensional database? And, and I really think there is no, right or wrong answer, it just really comes down to your use case. If you have an extremely, let's say, uh, complex graph, you know, then maybe you should go with a best of breed, purpose built database. But uh, more and more we are starting to see that organizations are looking to simplify their environment by going in for maybe a unified database that has multiple data structures. Yeah, well it's certainly, it's interesting when you hear Mongo yeah. speak, they don't, they don't call out Oracle specifically, but right. when they talk about legacy RDM, RDBMS that don't scale and are complex and are, and, are, and, are, and are expensive, they're talking about Oracle first, and of right. course there are others. Right. Um, and then when they, and they, they talk about uh, the bespoke databases, the horses for courses databases, that's a, then they show a picture of that. That's like the poster child for Amazon. And of course they yeah. don't call out Amazon, they're a great partner of, of right. Amazon's. Correct. But those are really the sort of two areas that Mongo's going after. Mm -hmm. um, now Oracle of course will talk about their converged strategy and mm -hmm. they're taking a similar approach, but so help us understand the difference there is it just because they're sort of Oracle is traditional RDBMS and they have all the the drawbacks associated with that. But by the way, there are some benefits as well. So how do Correct. you see that all playing out? So you know, it, it really uh, it's coming down to the the, uh, the over origins of these databases. Uh, I think they're converging to a point where they are offering similar services. And if you look at some of the benchmark numbers or you talk to users. I, I, from a business point of view, I, I, I don't think there's too much of a difference uh, technology-wise. The difference is that MongoDB started in the document space. They were more interested in uh, availability rather than consistency. Oracle started in the relation database with focus on financial services, so asset compliance is what they're based on. Mm -hmm. and 
since then, they've been adding other pieces. So, so they differ from where they started. Oracle uh, has been in the industry for uh, some, since 1970s. Yeah. So they have that maturity, but then they have that legacy. You know how I, I, I love it, because recently Oracle announced the MongoDB uh, uh, API. Correct. And so basically saying, why, why leave Oracle yeah. when you can just you know, you right. do the MongoDB? So that to me is a sign that MongoDB is doing well, because if Oracle calls you out, yes. <laughs> whether, you're, yes. whether you're Workday yeah. or Snowflake yeah. or Mongo, Correct. you know, or whomever, yes. That's yeah. a sign to me that right. you've got momentum and you're stealing share in that marketplace. That and clearly true. Mongo is, they're yeah. growing at 50 plus percent per year. Correct. So, thinking about the early, I mentioned 10 Gen early on, I remember that one of the first m conferences I went to, Mongo conferences, it was just, it was all developers, a lot of developers here as well, but they have really, since say 2014, expanded the capabilities. Mm -hmm. You talk about Atlas, you talked about all these other you know, types of databases that, that they've added. If it seems like Mongo is becoming a platform company, yes. uh, what are your thoughts on that in terms of them sort of up-leveling the message? They're now a billion-dollar-plus mm -hmm. company. What's the next, you know, wave for Mongo? So uh, Oracle announced MongoDB APIs. <laughs> AWS has Document DB. Yeah. Azure has Cosmos DB. So they all have. API compatible APIs, not the source code, because you know MongoDB has its own SSPL license, so they have written their own layer on top. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, if you, if you, uh, these companies have to keep innovating to catch up with MongoDB, because MongoDB can announce a brand new capability, then all these other players have to catch up. So. Other cloud providers have 80% or so of capabilities, but they'll never have 100% of what MongoDB has. So people who are diehard MongoDB fans, they prefer to stay on MongoDB. They are now able to write more applications, like you know, uh, MongoDB bought Realm, which is their front end, uh, like, you know, like if you're in social media kind of a thing, you can build your applications and sync it with Atlas. So, so MongoDB is now at a point where they are adding more capabilities that more like developers, like you know, 5G is coming, autonomous cars are coming, so now they can address IoT kind of use mm -hmm. cases. So, so that's why it's becoming such a juggernaut because it's becoming a platform rather than a single document database. Yeah, so Atlas is the near to midterm future. Today it's about 60% of revenues, but they have what, what Mongo calls self-serve, which is really the traditional on-prem stuff. Right. They're connecting those worlds. You're right. bringing up the point that, so of course they go across clouds. Right. You're also bringing up the point that they've got edge plays. We're going to talk to Verizon later on today and they've got uh, 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 edge edge activity going on with mm -hmm. developers. I, I call it super cloud, right? This yeah, sort of cloud, yeah. layer that floats yeah. above. Now, uh, of course, a lot of the super cloud concept says we're going to hide the underlying complexity, but for developers, they, wanna, they might want to tap those primitives. So Correct. Mongo presumably will let them do that. But, but that hybrid, that what we call super cloud, yeah. that is, is a new wave of innovation, is it not? And, and do, you, do you agree with that? And do you see that as a real opportunity for Mongo in terms of penetrating a new TAM? Yes, so uh, I see this is a new opportunity. In fact, uh, one of the reasons MongoDB has grown so quickly is because they are addressing more markets mm -hmm. than they had pre-pandemic. Um, also, there are all uh, gradations of users. Some uh, users want full control, they want an IaaS kind of, uh, uh, some want PaaS, and some businesses are like, you know, we don't care, we don't want to deal with the database. So today we heard uh, MongoDB serverless went GA. So now they have serverless capability, they have PaaS, but if, you, if you're more into Kubernetes, they have Kubernetes operator. So they're addressing the full stack mm -hmm. of different types of developers, different workloads, different geographical regions. So that's why the market is expanding. Yeah, we're seeing abstraction layers, you know, throughout they started at physical, virtual, containers, Correct. serverless, and eventually super cloud. Sanjeev, great analysis. Thanks Thank so, much so much for taking your time to come on theCUBE. Pleasure. All right, keep it right there. We're right back, right after this short break. This is Dave Vellante from the Javits Center at MongoDB World 2022.